to see it brought all the way through to the finish, we have to learn something about faithfulness. And there are too many people that are addicted to excitement. <laughs> and excitement doesn't have anything to do with faithfulness. Actually, faithfulness would be defined, in my way of defining it, as continuing to do what you know you're supposed to do when there's not one drop of excitement left. Come on now. So I'm gonna tell you something, and I hope you understand this, and it doesn't come across wrong. I've wondered for two days about whether to say this to you or not, because I know not everybody understands, but if you're mature enough, you'll understand what I'm getting ready to say. People have been asking me for weeks, well, are you excited about the women's conference? And actually, I wasn't. See? <laughs> you say, well, that don't make me feel very good. Well, I've done a few thousand of these. I'm excited for you. I wasn't excited for me because I knew how hard I was gonna work. <laughs> and I know what I'm gonna feel like tomorrow when the party's over. You should be here two hours from the time this is over and see what this place looks like. You should be here with all the people with sweat dripping off of their bodies, trying to clean the place up and reload the trucks and try to get airlines to go back home and miss planes and all that kind of stuff. In order for one person to be helped, somebody else always has to sacrifice. <laughs> Are you out there today? So if you think that being in ministry is just all gonna be exciting and fun, you are wrong. It'll be exciting. The first several women's conferences I had, I would get so excited that I would wear myself out with excitement. And then when the excitement was over, then I'd feel kind of down, you know? And I don't wanna be have, have, looking for something to like, whoo, about, and then, hmm, because it's over, and then, whoo. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> See, the thing is, is I wasn't excited, but I was committed. I am committed to you, to every single person that God has assigned for me to teach. I can tell you right now, I am committed to you until the day I die. I can promise you that as long as I can talk, I will be on that television five days a week, every morning, every evening, teaching you the Word of God to the best of my ability. And as long as I can walk and talk and move, I will do these conferences because I care about you. And just because I'm not excited doesn't mean a thing. I'm satisfied, I'm content. Get over the need to be looking for something all the time that excites you and just get committed to doing what you know you're supposed to do, whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it, whether it's convenient or it's inconvenient. Is anybody there? Anything new is exciting, but when it's not new anymore, it's not gonna be exciting. <laughs> you're excited when you first meet the man you're gonna marry. I'm committed to my husband, but my knees don't get weak when he comes in the house. I mean, you can't stay married for 52 years on excitement. <laughs> Did you hear me? You cannot stay married 52 years on excitement. You gotta have faithfulness. You gotta have commitment. And that's what you signed up for at the altar, till death do us part in good things and bad things, in sickness and health, for richer or for poorer. I'm committed. And how many people, that doesn't last one year because as soon as the goosebumps are gone and the excitement's gone and their heart doesn't pound anymore, they're looking for another new thrill. 
Come on, I'm talking to you. I'm talking about who is going to actually get committed enough to bear down and give birth to the things that God has put in your heart. Amen. Come on, I'm doing my best this afternoon to get something across to you. I love, today everybody's hopping from one thing to another. We're church hoppers and job hoppers and friend hoppers and so what if you've got, you know, I don't know how many people are on our Facebook and I don't care. I don't even want them to tell me. If I find out at the office, I find out accidentally. I mean, it's huge numbers. I don't care. How many friends do I really have? I don't know, maybe three or four. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, really true friends, you know. But I've got one friend that sticks close. That will never go away. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Now, Dave and I love each other. And I tell you the truth, I don't even know how many people really love each other when they get married. They're romantically attracted. But I, I don't think you even begin to know what love is until you start going through some stuff together. Amen. All right. If I'm going to even come close to getting finished, I got to move on here. So, got a scripture I want to read you. And then I got a few little ladies that have come up here and helped me. 1 John 3, 9. No one born or begotten of God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. So see, I like this. It's like nobody that's truly born again can live a sinful lifestyle. That doesn't mean you can't sin because we all make mistakes and sin. But the person who really is a lover of Jesus, I mean, the minute you sin, you're convicted and you are so quick to repent. So nobody born of God deliberately, knowingly, this is the Amplified Bible, deliberately, knowingly, habitually sins. Because, now I want you to get this, because God's nature abides in him. When you're born again, you get a new nature. God's nature, who God is, his character comes to live in in you. Everybody say, I've got it. <laughs> and I love the Amplified. This is getting right down to it. The divine sperm, <laughs> Lord God, help me, <laughs> remains permanently with him and he cannot practice sinning because he is born and begotten of God. Now, I don't know what, how we're going to get this scripture to fit together with some of the stuff we're seeing in the world today from people that are calling themselves Christians and going to church every week. I'm not trying to be judgmental. Only God knows a person's heart. But we are expected to be different. We are expected to live a different life. And Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. If you're expecting to be a full-on, committed, fruit-bearing Christian, people are not all going to like you. You know why? Because your presence convicts them. Come on, listen to me. Just your presence convicts them. Now, if you compromise your morals to keep them comfortable, <laughs> and that, there's a lot of that going on today. You know, we want to make everybody feel comfortable. We want to make everybody feel welcome. And 
you know, God's just a God of love and he just wants us to love everybody. Well, maybe you better go back and read some of the stuff that Jesus said to some people. Woe unto you, you vipers and snakes. <laughs> I don't know what woe is, but I've already decided I don't want any of it because it sounds really bad to me. So when I read this scripture, and I'm just going to be plain, you know, when a, when a man's sperm is planted in the womb of his wife, she becomes pregnant. And this says the divine sperm of Almighty God is in us. <laughs> so everybody in here, even the few men that got in by special invitation, <laughs> you're pregnant. And here, here's what it is. You're pregnant with God's nature. There's a seed. You know, Jesus is called the seed, capital S. Come on, I'm going to fly off of here. The seed, the sperm of Almighty God dwells in the womb of your spirit. The Holy Spirit has come to live inside of your spirit. And everything in your spirit is holy. Now the Holy Spirit comes committed to work with us for the rest of our life to help get what's in us out of us. So somebody can see it. Can I have my ladies come up please? Somebody had the job of going around and finding pregnant women and saying, how far along are you? <laughs> okay, now they're just going to stand and they're going to stand sideways. <laughs> okay, I hope you can see them. Is the pulpit in the way? Because I don't want the pulpit to be in the way. Well, you'll get them on the screen. All right, now, when you're first born again, you got all this stuff happening on the inside of you. You're feeling things. You're feeling changes. You're feeling emotions. You know, you got, you know, it's like when a person gets a dream from God, it's like when God spoke to me and said, you're going to go all over the world and teach my word. I mean, I was just like, wow. <laughs> but when I started telling people, they laughed. They thought I was crazy. They didn't want to have anything to do with it anymore. You know why? I wasn't showing yet. I, was, I knew I was pregnant. She's pregnant. You're, how far along are you? Seven weeks. Seven weeks. You know you're pregnant, right? Are you, are you already feeling any changes? And um, morning sickness. Morning sickness, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's got some stuff going on. But I see her and I'm like, you sure look pregnant to me. <laughs> well, see, that's what happens when Jesus comes to live on the inside of you and you know that you're now a new creature and you're trying to tell everybody else what's happened and they're like, well, you don't, you're not acting any different. You're no different. You're, we're not showing yet. Well, see, there's a real problem if nine months from now she's still not showing. Come on, stick. this is what's wrong with the church. Christians are 30, 40, and 50 years old and they're still not showing. Come on. So, we're not expected to show after being born again a month. God works in us. In Philippians 2.12, it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, not in your own strength, but while God effectually is at work in you. So he's saying, the good thing that's in you, work now with the Holy Spirit, follow the Holy Spirit, obey the Holy Spirit, stay in the Word, water that seed with the Word, and you'll grow. Little by little, from glory to glory, you'll be changed into his image. Well, now, how far along are you? Six weeks, third baby. 
six weeks, third baby. Well, you, you know, you're not showing much either. How about you? Seven months. Seven months. Wow. Look at that. We've got something going on here. <laughs> now, I can tell that you're pregnant. By the way, I bless these babies in the name of Jesus. They're going to be healthy and strong and whole and serve God and be a blessing to these mamas. How far along are you? 30 weeks. How many weeks do you have left then? 10. 10. Mm. I carried all my babies 10 months. <laughs> 10 months. That's why what comes out of me is well done. <laughs> okay, now, oh, we don't have any. I can tell she's pregnant. Everybody, how many of you can tell that she's pregnant? How about you? 36 weeks. Okay, now, do you feel pregnant? Oh, yes. <laughs> Are you ready to deliver? Yes. You're ready. Yes. You'd be, any day would be fine for you, right? Yes. yes. Well, see, <laughs> come on, get a hold of this. If you're pregnant with a dream, God has put something in your heart. I don't care if it's to get out of debt or to go to the world preaching the gospel. Whatever your dream is, it's important to you. And if it's important to you, it's important to God. So we're not just talking about people being in ministry. You got to be patient. And you got to be faithful. Because Satan is the one who came up with the idea of abortion. And he is a dream thief. And he wants you to abort your dream. And if he can't get you to abort it, then he wants you to birth it early. Premature births don't always make it. And he wants you to do things out of God's timing and birth a bunch of sickly things that don't have any real life that you're really not ready to do yet. So you get out in the world and you say a bunch of things that you can't pull off and you make a fool out of yourself. And how many people do we see today that get in ministry way too fast? They, they, they can sing really great. So all of a sudden they're promoted, 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 promoted because of their gift. And then they have some massive moral failure and become a shame to everybody in the body of Christ. And now all Christians are judged because all these people are phonies. Don't try to birth something before God's ready. Beg him not to give you any opportunity that's not an opportunity from him. Amen? Amen? So the longer you stick with it, come on, when I send you home, I don't want you to go home with some new vision for your life and have it last a week and then have you throw it away, abort it, because you found out it's going to take a little bit longer than you thought it would, be a little harder than you thought it would. Anybody? Would? It's easy to go on a diet Sunday night after dinner. <laughs> Anybody can do that. But what happens by Wednesday afternoon when you're hungry enough to eat everything on the table and then eat the table? <laughs> That's when you got to be committed. It's easy to say, I want to get out of debt, but when you have to be really committed is when you're out shopping, which you shouldn't be. Don't ever shop for entertainment if you're trying to get out of debt. Only go when you have to buy something. You got to be committed when it's 75% off. <laughs> and you're already not paying for what you got. Amen. How, how many of you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me tell you something. You can clap and cheer and shout and yell in here. When I send you home, I want you to know the excitement's not going to last. The conference is going to be over. It's going to be the middle of the night and you're going to wake up and the devil is going to tell you some of the biggest lies you have ever heard in your life. And you're going to look at the teenagers that are driving you crazy and the husband that is driving you crazy and the bills that are driving you crazy. And that's when the devil's going to sneak in and try to get you to forget your dream. Amen. Amen. 
And I want you to remember me saying, stay committed, stay faithful, don't give up. Thank you, ladies. Oh, did I get to pray for all of you? I want you to bless these babies in Jesus' name. Bless, 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 bless. You can name them after me. You know, there's a lot of different stages of pregnancy. There's all the crazy hormones. Come on. And some ladies, when their hormones go crazy, they get really crazy. And then you get to that stage that that one girl was and you just feel so fat. And you just feel like you're just gonna pop and you're so uncomfortable. And that's the way some of you are, like you're, you're pregnant with something from God. And you're just, you just think, if I don't get this out of me, <laughs> if I, man, I was so pregnant with the desire to teach God's people. I remember getting on the floor and just begging God one night. I'd been on a fast. And I mean, the Spirit of God came on me, and I was just like, I pleaded with God for hours. God, please, you just gotta let me help more people, God. I gotta help more people. I gotta help more people. God puts that in you. And I felt like if I couldn't give birth to something other than preaching to 20 people in the basement floor, that I couldn't stand it anymore. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on, you know, anybody know what I'm talking about? But I stayed committed. There's a lot of different stages of pregnancy. There's transition. <laughs> and that's one of the most painful times of pregnancy, by the way, when the baby's transitioning into the birth canal. Anybody in transition right now? I hope I haven't lost you. I guess if you're a man, you might be lost, but... Now, you know, today women get epidurals. But I'm gonna tell you something, there are no spiritual epidurals. No spiritual epidurals. If you want God to use you, he's gonna have to get you ready. Because you're not ready. You think you're ready, but you're not ready. Then I'm gonna tell you what, when you leave this place, you can expect, and I, I hate to even say this, I'm not trying to prophesy bad things, but I don't want you to be surprised. The devil is gonna come immediately and try to steal from you what you got here. Don't you let him do it. As soon as he shows up lying to you, say, no, you're a liar. 